Okay guys, we've got a bunch of products here at First Man. We've got our men's lifestyle supplement, which is everything that a man needs on a daily basis. We've got our natural diuretic supplement, Defined, which allows you to get an angular face, removes all the water, especially good for summer. We've got our Male Advantage book, which is a paperback. You can order this, or you can get this in audiobook format or ebook format. We've got our Better Looking Man course, which I'll bring up pictures on screen now. And we've got my personal diet plan and fitness plan in ebook format. On top of this, guys, we've got a body wash coming out soon, part of the testosterone friendly range. We've got men's boxers and a whole clothing line coming out soon. A whole bunch of products, but for now, let's get back to the video that you actually wanted to watch. Okay guys, welcome back to a whole nother bunch of videos. I'm going to do a mass recording right now. It's, uh, as you can see, it's a heat wave in the UK again. It's gone up to 33 degrees again. And um, the thing is, people in other countries, like, it's not hot 33 degrees. It is when you don't have aircon, okay? But luckily, thanks to Wheat Waffles, talking about his aircon unit being the best purchase he's ever had, I've purchased an AC unit, put it in the bedroom in the office, so I'm able to work. But here is still hot. Uh, that door doesn't really, it doesn't work, the AC unit with the door. It just, there's no way of keeping the hot air out. So with this room, it's still the same. We have to wait till nighttime. That's why I haven't done any further podcasts since the two that I did. We're, we're still waiting on the other one to be um, correctly formatted. It just needs to be put into MP4 format, so we're still waiting for that. But the purpose of today's video, guys, is to talk about we are the first generation of 20-year-old losers. How mental is that, right, guys? How crazy is that? I was discussing this with somebody the other day, right? And it was a woman. I'm frightened this chair's going to fall back. Hang on. There we go. It like unclips and just shoots me back. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to a woman about this the other day. And she didn't quite... Like, she understood it because... Obviously, she's looking at men and going, yeah, they're, they're not great. Do you know what I mean? In their, in their teens and 20s. But she didn't understand it like a man. Okay. And I think th this isn't, I think more stress needs to be put on certain subjects. Like I spoke in a previous video about testosterone. And I was telling you guys like how crazy it is that doctors aren't bringing this up and going, we've got a pandemic on our hands. I, I think this needs to be taught in schools where it's like, we are the first generation of 20-year-old losers. I just realized how shiny my head is with this light above me, but never mind. Jay's going to kill me, the SMP guy. Um, and this is the thing, right? Because it's like in any previous generation, a 21-year-old man was known as like a young, sought-after bachelor. It was like every woman wanted to lock him down. He was valuable. He was young. He was handsome. Do you know what I mean? He was in shape. He... You know, maybe he came from wealth, maybe he had, like, career prospects, he's intelligent, he's going somewhere, what, like, whatever it might have been, right? And I know, like, in my dad's generation, and, like, put, to put that into perspective, my dad's actually dead now, but he was, uh, he died at, like, 59 years old, he'd be, like, 60 now. So that just puts it into perspective as to when that was. In his generation, you didn't have to really do a lot to get women, you know? It's like, all the stories that you hear, it's like, oh, I... I saw him come past on his motorbike and I thought he was really handsome. Like, it's like, that was it. Because there wasn't many people around. It was just, like, the competition was lower. Certain things weren't kind of celebrated like they are today. Like, you didn't have to be really wealthy, have some level of fucking social influence. Do you know what I mean? Like, you didn't have to have, like, the connections that you've got today. It was like you just had to kind of just, like, there were guys that were in, like, biker gangs. Do you know what I mean? They were considered, oh, what does they call them? Like, punk rockers. And girls were just like, he's really nice. I'm going to settle down with him. I'm going to marry him at, like, 21 years old, 18 years old. Whereas we are now in the, we're the, we're the first generation of guys who, in their teens and 20s, are considered a terrible option. And it's the first time this ever happens. And I think, I think it's, there's many reasons for male depression, but I think that's a massive reason as to why so many men are depressed because we're like guinea pigs here. We're like the control group. We're the first ones through the door experiencing what it's like to not have it easy. 
You know, like I said, a guy was 21 years old. He was so sought after. Every woman wanted to be with him. And if every woman didn't want to be with him, there's so many... There's, there's, there was such a lack of people, like, just alive, right? And there was so many... There was such a lack of options for the average woman because she didn't have social media. She couldn't go on the internet and just use... You know, she couldn't go on her phone and use Tinder and stuff like that. So she kind of had to pick somebody in the local area. And if she got to, like... 23 years old, 24, 25 years old and wasn't married, she would just fucking settle with the, you know, the bummiest guy around to make sure, just to make sure that her family and the people in the area didn't think there was something wrong with her. Do you know what I mean? And like, it was really easy for guys. Like women weren't able to work. They weren't getting paid the same money. You kind of had to have a man to be able to get by. Whereas now it's like, there's women on a hundred grand a year and they're going, I want my man to be making seven, eight figures a year. Otherwise, I don't feel as though it's worth being with him. It's like the craziest shit you've ever seen. We're the first generation of 20-year-old losers. That's mental to me. You know, you've got like 25-year-old men living at home with their mum, no money, you know, nothing going on in life, no prospects. That's never happened before. It's, it's so normal in this generation. You know, we've extended education. Before, I think it was like up to like 16 or whatnot. Now it goes up to like 18, then people go to university, then they might go traveling. It's very normal to be 23, 24 years old, to be coming back from like Australia with no money in your pocket. And people are like, yeah, but you traveled the world, you've experienced shit. Me and Wheat Waffle spoke about this on the podcast where we were speaking about people going to university and they get praised for it. When actually it's like, I don't know if it's doing much benefit to your life. You know, you're just drinking sitting around all day, not really doing a lot. Wheat Waffles went to university, I didn't, but he said the same thing, so there's my evidence. And, you know, they get they get celebrated for it. And it's, it's like seen as a positive, which is really, really strange, because it's like you haven't actually done anything that's gonna help you in the real world or set you up correctly. And like, like I said, my dad's generation, he was, by my age, he had two kids, a mortgage, he was married, he had his own business and he was making like a real good amount from that business and they were going on like holidays three, four times a year. I, I, I don't think that's the play. I don't think that's the play in this generation. I don't think you have to anymore. Um, I wouldn't recommend that to any of you guys, but just to put it into perspective, by like 29 years old, he was considered like successful in every single area of life and he'd accomplished everything you could possibly accomplish like as a man based on the old school rules of life. Do you know what I mean? Get a wife, settle down, have some kids, get your own house, like build a successful business, like get a nice car, that sort of stuff. He had it all. He had it all ticked by like 29 years old. He probably had it all ticked by like 27, I think when they had me, 28. So, you know, and I, I think they had my sister like 22, 23. So you think to yourself by like 22, 23, he was in that same situation basically. Just waited a few years to have me. We just don't really have that anymore, right? And like I said, that, that's not the play in this era. It's not, okay? And that's what this whole video is about. For you guys to get your head around and to get, to, to quite honestly, reconvince your minds that the world's different. The world's different now, okay? And a lot of you youngsters, like let's say if you're 14, 15, 16 watching this, it's going to be different for you because your parents are going to be potentially people like me, you know, maybe a few years older, who are gonna look at it and go, no, do you know what, like, life's different now, okay? Like, like I grew up watching First Man, he said this and this, like, that might be a thing, right? Um, but my parents, it was very much like, you're 21 years old, you don't have a job, what's going on? Like, what are you doing with your life? You know, oh shit, my son's a bum, he's not even married at like 22 years old. Like, that was what my kind of generation grew up in, and the guys who are in their 20s now, like, panicking and worrying. I think that shit has shifted, right? It, it, it's not to say you can't be like 22 year old millionaire, people are still doing it and whatnot, but it's almost like shifted to the thirties, okay? And like I was saying to Wheat Waffles on the podcast as well, I don't think there's many beautiful women seven and above. Look at from my experience, being a 29 year old man, I'm talking to 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 year old women. Okay, that's like the main base of women that I'm talking to. That's like the main base of women that I'm sleeping with, that I'm talking to, that I spend time with, going on dates with, whatever. I think a lot of women have realized in this generation, most men in their teens and 20s now are losers. 
It's not like it used to be. And they're having to look up an age bracket and go for the guys that are in their 30s who have sorted their shit out. Now, it could be bags of distractions. It could be the educational route. It could be that, you know, there's more options available to us these days. So we're less likely to be like, hey, marriage, but, you know, and do all the standard shit. It could be a collection of all of them. You know, distractions especially, because that will, you know, like stuff like porn. You know, if you're playing video games all the time, you're probably not going to be like, I've got to get out into the world and go and find a, you know, find a woman, settle down, have some kids. Like, it's probably not going to be on your mind, right? Because you've got other shit that's giving you that dopamine buzz. Whereas back in the day, the only excitement most guys had was get a wife, have sex with that wife, have some kids, go down the pub, watch the football, play football, whatever it might be, play rugby, you know, play cricket. That it was kind of like all that people really had to get them going. Um, so it's very strange, but the purpose of this video is to convince you guys to keep pushing, to be ambitious, to keep going for it as, as young as you can, but to appreciate we're in a different generation now where, you know, for the first time in human history, a man being like 21 years old is seen as a negative. That's weird. Like you used to have guys that were 25 years old in, in the army, and I'm talking like back in the Roman days, and they were like, I don't, like, some people have called me out on this before, that's not true, I'm not a historian, right? But a guy could be like 25 years old, he might be a general, he might, you know, that might be a bit high up, but he's doing really well for himself, he's a high-ranking officer of some sort, and he's deemed successful in that society. It's just not the case anymore. You know, a lot of the stuff that we do today, outside of sports, music, and probably acting, takes a hell of a lot longer. And I've spoken to you guys about this before when we find like a young superstar sports athlete and it's like, this guy's 18 years old, he's making 10 million a year, just scored a goal at the World Cup. What were you doing at 18? And it like, people try and compare themselves. And it's like sports and fucking everything else is different, man. Like, look at, look at me, for example. I'm 29, my life's only really, like, when I was 28, my life only really kicked into gear. I'm 30 at the end of the month and I feel as though this is like a new era in my life where things are starting to go well. Like I'm top dog now, I'm sitting on top, I'm getting whatever I want. Women, money, like houses, cars, whatever. It's like things are clicking, they're coming together. I'm like, you can't tell right now because I'm too hot, but I'm like figuring out fashion and stuff like that. Like things are clicking, like, you know, it, and it took me like nine, 10 years to get to that position. Whereas back in the day, you know, all you'd have to do is just fight well. And it was like, hey, promotion, promotion. Hey, you were great on the battlefield today. It was very easy back then. It was completely different. There's a, like a lot of shit was, it was solvable quickly. Whereas now it's like, you want a really good job. You might have to go to school, university, etc., cetera, for like, until you're like 25, 26 years old. And then by the time you leave, you need job experience. And then you need to work your way up. It's like, it's gonna be your thirties before you've even seen some serious points on the board. And there's just some level of acceptance that we need in this generation that we are 20 year old losers. We're the first generation ever. It's crazy. You know, it's crazy to think that women out there now will look at a 20, like for the first time in history, will look at a 25 year old man, 21 year old man, whatever, and be like, ugh. Like I said, that guy that I met at the restaurant, he was like in LA, and LA's different circumstances, there's a lot of gold diggers, but he was like in LA, unless you're over 28 years old, women won't talk to you. They just won't pay you any attention. If you look too young, they're not really interested unless you look like an athlete, but they'll ask you your age pretty quickly, and if you're like, oh, I'm 25, they'll be like, he's probably broke, right? This is the first generation in history where we've ever had that, and I think, this is why so many people are struggling to get their head around that male advantage concept that I always teach to you guys, because it's never happened before. And it goes against everything we've ever known. Like the young, handsome guys, it's like, this is the first generation ever where, but I, I, I think this is what's triggered it, right? I think where women are now in the workplace and they're making very close to the same money as men. And there's a lot of women making a lot better money than men. I know a lot of women on six figures a year, which is crazy. And, um, I think that's triggered something inside women's brains where they're like, these men have to step up another level now. So instead of being like 23 years old, he's got a job. Fuck, I don't have a job. I can't even join a workforce. He's fantastic. He's seen as a prize. Okay, whereas now these women are like, well, I've got money, so 
What's the next level above that? The men are going to have to be even better than they were before. Okay, so if I'm making six figures a year, this guy has to be making six, seven million a year for me to take him seriously. Why aren't you that much better than me? And you go, okay, well, 25 years old, you're making six million a year? Most guys are like, are you fucking kidding me? You know, to be honest, most guys in their 30s are like, are you fucking kidding me? Right, and it doesn't even have to go to that extent. Like you could be making 200K per year and she respects you, whatever. But I'm just saying like the extent that we have to go to now, the levels that we have to be at now, time is our biggest obstacle. You know, what's expected of us from women now in terms of assets, success, who we've built ourselves to be, our experience of navigating through really tough problems, et cetera, et cetera. That's just not doable with the time restraints. I don't think you can figure all of, all of that out by 25 years old. I don't think you can become that person by 28 years old. Do you know what I mean? For the, for the mass of men, it's very likely that they're going to be like 32 years old before they start seeing those serious points on the board. I always use myself as, as an example because, you know, it's easy to do. I know myself very well. My shit didn't really start coming together till I was 28. And it wasn't like 29 this year till it like really, I mean, I feel like I've become, like I'm on top. I can, I can go up to pretty much any woman I want and I'm quite confident of getting a yes. You know, my life is, is very good. I can, I can do cool shit now, right? It's taken a long time to get to that point. I'm not completely special. I don't think I'm the smartest motherfucker alive, but I've definitely got something that most men don't have. Okay, There's, I've definitely got certain traits that just give me an edge. The point I'm making is that I've probably done it quicker than most guys would. And I started at like 19, when I started really thinking about like starting my own business, getting into all these different things, whatever. Like I was looking at crypto 25, 26 years, probably 26 years old. Like that's three years ago, do you know what I mean? It's, that's not even early, but I'm just saying it's a long process. And that, as a lot of you guys know, it wasn't a huge amount of money, but it was the starting cash that allowed me to do a lot of what I did with First Man. Um, and this shit takes a long time. And I think I've got some fantastic traits. I think as an entrepreneur, I'm one of the best in my generation, and yet it's taken me this long. So it's like for the average guy, you're probably gonna be in your thirties before shit starts going well. You know, and as people are living longer and looking younger for longer, and as much as I say that women have a decline, whatever, 30 year old women today look better than 30 year old women did in any other generation, right? And 30 year old men look probably 10 years younger than 30 year old men used to in any other generation, right? So that shit is extending. Do you see what I mean? So we do have more time, but I think what people haven't seen is that that shit has jumped 10 years. Like before the old bachelor, the 21 year old young man who's just come out of Oxford and all the young women are wanting to get with him because they think he's a high prospect. That's now like 30, 31. It's like jump 10 years. And it's like, oh, he's coming out of Oxford, is he? I don't give a fuck. Has he, made, has he actually made money yet? And until you've actually gone out there and made the money and become that success story and actually put some shit together, you don't get that same, oh, the young bachelor effect. It's, it's different now, it's moved 10 years. Okay, so. Try hard, guys. Try and become successful. Push forward on all fronts. Just because you are young doesn't mean you, you can't make it. But the point I am making is that this is the first generation of 20-year-old losers. It's completely normal to, to not really be doing shit. So I think for so many guys to be like, let's say, 24, 25 years old, panicking, putting pressure on themselves and going, oh, I can't get any women. I'm still a virgin at 25. Things aren't going well. I don't have a good job. It's like, you're judging that based off history. You're bu ju judging that based off like maybe your brother who's 10 years older. You're judging that based off your dads and like other people around you. At your age, I had, shut up. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not interested. We're the first generation that, you know, are pre pretty much like our, I think they call it like a gestation period. Okay, like uh, in like the animal kingdom our kind of like learning and growing period. You know, back in the day, you'd get to like 16 and then you were able to like go to war and get a job and all this other shit, right? I think for modern men, that's more like 25 now. That's what I mean, it's been jumped up like 10 years. There's most guys are getting to 25 and getting their first job because they went to uni and then went traveling, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just like, it's so normalized now. And a lot of women have had to, have had to look 10 years beyond and go, that 32 year old guy who's driving the nice car, who's in the nice suit, who's got his shit sorted, 
that's what I require. You know, and men of yesteryear, like if you look at British guys from the 1920s, 1930s, they were like 21 years old with, you know, a decent job, maybe working for their dad's company and like wearing suits everywhere, looking immaculate. They've got a really nice car. They've been driving since they were 12 years old. Do you know what I mean? It was completely different. Everything we do now is fucking slower. Maybe that's because we're living longer. Like I said, maybe it's the distractions. Maybe it's because education gets extended now. I don't know what it is. It could be all of them collectively. I'm not sure. But it, you guys have to understand that that is very normal. And it's an overused phrase in every generation, you know, in every age group. But your 30s really are your new 20s. And for me to be 30 in literally like 20 days now, and to be telling you guys, I feel young, I feel energized. I've, I'm literally just starting the stream platform, which is my like entire life goal, which I've been working towards for like eight years. You know, I've always had it like in my mind what I want to do. I've been working towards it for like eight years. I'm only just starting to execute on it. I'm only just bringing out like five new products in September. I'm only just starting my fashion line. This podcast is only, like with this setup has only had two guests so far. You know, and you just think, where's that gonna go? Do you know what I mean? Like it's is very much, remember I said to you guys before, 30 for a man is like 18 for a woman. Like the two are very similar. I always said that men are living life in reverse or trying to live on the female timeline. I think that is also true for like the men of yesteryear and who we are now. I think the new male timeline is very much like a man, a man at 30 today is like a man at 18 in like the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, whatever. I think, that's, I think that's a very accurate depiction of what I see going on in the world right now, guys. So this, this was more of like a mental health video for a lot of you out there who, uh, you know, very, like I didn't have any of the answers when I was younger and I was struggling. I was like, why am I not successful at 23, 24? I'm getting old now. This is panic stations. Now I sit here today and I'm like, God, I'm so young, right? So, you know, because everything's figured out, it's like, okay, I feel, yeah, yeah, like it's not panic stations at all. Right, and what I don't want you guys to do is get to 24 years old, be panicking, be like, oh my God, my life's going nowhere. Go and find a woman that you don't really want to be with, get married, have some kids or some shit. Go and get a job that you actually hate just to look like you're actually accomplishing something, just to satisfy everyone around you and not feel and look like a bum. Because it's like, guys, we're in a different era now. Your time, you're still in, like I've said to you guys before, you're still in pre-season. Everything for a man before like 28, 29, 30 is pre-season, like sports. You're just building towards something so that you can start the actual game. Like my life didn't, my actual game didn't start till I was like 28, 29. And then it's just skyrocketed. Like for example, people look at Andrew Tate, for example. Andrew Tate was nothing literally a year ago. He had a YouTube channel and nobody really cares. Like nobody was really following his stuff. I, I remember his following was smaller than mine. He's copied loads of my content. I just put that out there. And, um, you know, it's just like now he's, he's blown up on TikTok. Now he's got all of this money. Do you know what I mean? At like 28, 29, he, he just literally retired as an MMA fighter. He was basically doing, he just did the cam girls thing, you know, the kind of like webcam shit. And he started making money for the first time in his life. Now he's like 36 years old. And, you know, people are like, God, he's so successful and whatever. It's very recent. It's, le it's, it's about eight years, seven years since he started making, his, making proper money. Only seven years ago. So he was like 28, 29 years old. And everybody panics and whatever. It's like, he will openly say that he was like a, until like 26, 27, he was like a bum. He was trying to feature on every reality TV show, trying to get famous, trying to get some clout. He was like scrapping to try and find some money. Do you know what I mean? He did the cam girl stuff. That was his starting block. He used that to get a casino. It, like it just, it's exponential. Somebody said to me the other day, like your wealth acquisition is kind of wealth accumulation is very slow. And I was like, but that's very unfair because I didn't really start making like serious consistent money till like September of this basically last year. So it's only been like 11 months since I started making like serious, serious money on a consistent basis. Okay, so you think to yourself, well, look what I've done during that time. And I make heavy reinvestments that are very long term. 
you know, especially with like products and stuff, products that I start working on six months ago and they're coming out in like September. So it's like six, seven months to get it to market and then you start making money on it and then that shit becomes exponential and it's just like, like people don't understand and I've said this before and I think I called it the exponential, it's, it's kind of like, and I'll tell you what, here, here's how I describe it. There is a video on this on the channel. It's something to do with exponential something of age, okay? I can't remember the exact title, but you guys will be able to find it. But basically the whole concept, if I want to simplify it, is that from, 20, like from 18 to 29, you might make like 2% progress on your success. And then from 29 to 30, you might make like another 20% progress on your success. Okay, and then from 30 to 31, like you might make another like 15%. Like these jumps just become crazy once you hit a certain point. And that is what I want to express in this video. This is the first generation where it's taking a fuck ton of time. And we're not really getting our rewards as men until like our 30s. It's the first generation ever. And that's why like... I'm one of the first through the wall on this, okay? Like, where I'm preaching this to so many people, I've been preaching the male advantage for like fucking eight years. That's why I said earlier, Andrew Tate copied a lot of my content. I'm not mad about it. I just wish he'd link back to me because I've been doing this stuff for about eight years. And a lot of the stuff that he says is exactly what I've been saying, but people are starting to actually get on board with it and believe it now, okay? People are saying the male advantage, you peak later and all this stuff, right? And that women are more interested in like success the success of the men, the experience, etc., than the look and what um, and the looks and whatnot. And um, you know, people are only starting to get on board with it now, but it's because it's so alien, it's so new. It's never really happened before. It's like the first, like I said, the first generation of twenty-year-old losers. That might even like move forward into, into the future. If we end up living to like one hundred and fifty years old, that might even be extended into like your thirties. But we might not be around to see that. Who knows, right? But this is it's just something you need to get your head around, guys, and like put less pressure on yourself. Now keep working, try and push it, try and reach your top as quickly as you can. But just be just be really aware that times have changed. Okay? You don't need to be you know don't need to get to your thirties and have two kids and be married anymore. It's not the same. I'm telling you, as a guy who's turning thirty at the end of the month, I feel like I'm about eighteen, nineteen years old. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. I look the best I've ever looked. I feel young as fuck. I've got a ton of energy. I feel massively ambitious. I've got the most money of my life. It's just like, this is, I, I don't really see the problem there. Okay, so being the first generation of 20 year old losers, it sucks, but accept it and realize that the kind of male race might have jumped 10 years. Okay, might have jumped like 10 years in advance on our timeline. It's almost like uh, when you're doing video editing, you like stretch it out to slow-mo. That's kind of what happens. Like, oh, we used to live to like 50 years old. Now we're living to like 80. So that section there where you're like growing, it's just kind of become longer, which is really strange. I, I wonder if humans live to like 2000 years old, would we just fuck around and waste a whole bunch of time? Would we waste like loads more? Would we do like 200 years traveling the galaxy? Do you know what I mean? Like who knows, right? And I think that could be a factor in it where we know we've got more time. We're very conscious that we're, like you feel younger, you look in the mirror, you look younger. It's very hard to get that thing in your brain. Like I, like I said to you guys, when I first lost my hair, obviously I've got SMP now, if anybody's wondering, like, I don't know, the light, the light might be shining on it, but if anybody's wondering, actually, no, you've got some hair up there. Uh, when I first went bold, it like triggered something in me. And there's two moments. My best friend died at 18 in a car accident and it triggered something in me to become successful and motor on with my life and stop going out drinking, etc. And the second one, like I said, I lost my hair. I looked in the mirror and I was like, I'm getting old. I need to sort some shit out. Like, I can't just be some broke, bold, skinny young guy. Like, that's awful. I was like, I need to sort some shit out. If I'm going to be bold, let's at least be masculine and successful, right? That's like the way I'd look at it. And I think for a lot of us, where we're looking younger for longer, we're kind of looking in the mirror and going, hey, what's the rush? Like, I'm going to live fucking forever. Like, I think, here's a quote for you guys. I think the realization of mortality encourages and forces you to do more with your life. I think it ignites something inside men that makes them feel a sense of urgency 
to go out there and get something accomplished before they die. Like that, there's a speech. It's in, uh, I think it's, it might even be in Limitless. No, not Limitless. It might be in Interstellar, where he's like rage, rage against the dying of the light. If you listen to that poem, I think it's by a Welsh guy, he's, if you listen to that clearly, that sums up exactly what I just spoke about right there. Okay guys, we've got a bunch of products here at First Man. We've got our men's lifestyle supplement, which is everything that a man needs on a daily basis. We've got our natural diuretic supplement, Defined, which allows you to get an angular face, removes all the water, especially good for summer. We've got our Male Advantage book, which is a paperback. You can order this, or you can get this in audiobook format or ebook format. We've got our Better Looking Man course, which I'll bring up pictures on screen now. And we've got my personal diet plan and fitness plan in ebook format.